Hope you guys are doing really well. The weather is turning out to be pretty shitty right here. But last week was great. Uh, we had an international, well, national holiday actually called uh, Sinterklaas and um, had a great time celebrating it with my family. And at the same time, in the same week, we also launched uh, a new website for my company, Artist Coaching. And we also launched our first online courses programs. So if you prefer learning online or if you would like to know more about those things, it's online right now on the website artistcoaching.nl. And I'm really excited about it because I think it's a great add to the company. Aside from uh, personal coaching, it's also... Um, a great ad to learn by yourself on your own pace um, and it's a great basis to yeah like fundament for your artist career in my opinion but that's not why we're here uh, today we're here because I'm gonna do another Q&A as I always do um, today I asked a few people on Instagram and last week I asked a few people uh, on my community page on Facebook let me open it up um, if there were some questions so let's go over that first and let's just say if you have some questions feel free to put them in the comment section or you can just send in your question on Instagram using the Q&A function uh, I'll just grab a few of them and start to go deeper into them as quick as possible uh, let me check question one we should create our own sound or should we start producing with the pre-made presets like vandalism? In my opinion, using other people's presets or using other people's samples from Splice, for instance, it's not a bad thing at all. That's the whole reason why they're there, to use it. Just as long as you make sure that they are um, right free and that you have the rights to use them because if you use samples that aren't right free, that could be a problem. Using pre-made presets is good legal for original remix or remix tracks. Using pre-made presets, it's legal and it's good, you know, like I would pref I would say um, go over the presets and pick the ones that you like and then start adjusting them to your own taste because then you start creating your own sound. But some people might do it differently and sometimes like the, the preset itself works perfectly and you don't have to change anything. Uh, so I would recommend you to always start with the presets, go over them, save yourself some time and see what you can do with those presets. Um, that's the best way, in my opinion. Uh, what's up everyone checking in on Instagram? Hope you guys are doing really well. I'm just answering some questions here, so feel free to send in your question if you want to. Let's pick this one. Uh, I am not getting any IDs, so any tips to get IDs for new producers, it will be much helpful. Well, that's really personal about how you can stimulate that, but for me personally, it really helped to um, listen to other music and most of the time live sets. If I started to listen to other people live sets, so for instance, uh, DJ Hardwell live sets on Ultra or Tomorrowland or whatever, that always inspired me to create something new. Um, so listening to live sets really helped me. Listening to other people's music on Spotify really helps me. Um, I think what's most important is that you find out for yourself what your trigger is. Like what's the thing that triggers your creativity? And like I said, for me that is l watching other people's live sets and getting triggered by it and that triggers my creativity to create something new. Uh, but for you, it might be going outside of the studio and having a look at the beautiful scenery and see what it brings you. So I really believe that it's more important to find out what works for you. To me, it always has been uh, listening to other people's live sets. Next one. What's up everyone? Checking in right now on Instagram. I hope you guys are doing well. Answering some questions here. So if you have a question, you can leave it in the comment section. Or just ask it here. What would, would be happy to have your feedback on a couple of my tracks which I'm planning to release? Well, I get this question a lot. Um, I understand that a lot of people 
would like to get feedback on your music and unfortunately I'm not in a position to give everyone feedback so what I always do is on my Facebook page I have this thing called the live feedback feedback sessions uh, I try to do it every now and then I go live on my Facebook page and you can send your music there and I will try to give feedback to as many people as possible uh, unfortunately it's something that I have to do in between my schedule so I don't always have the time to do it uh, but if I find the time I always do it so that's the only way to get feedback on your music from my side if you want to let's see My release just came out on Flamingo Recordings. Well, congrats, man. I've released myself there as well. Uh, great label. Do you have any tips for creating more streams and such? Well, it depends on what you've already done to get more streams. Um, but the first thing that pops up, up in my mind is reaching out to playlist owners. And right now, Spotify, of course, is one of the biggest platforms. Apple Music is one of the biggest ones. Reach out, go to those platforms, find playlists that fit your music genre and reach out to those people to see if there's a way to get your music featured in those playlists. Aside from that, and this is something that not everyone knows, is that once your track has been scheduled to release and it already has been uploaded, if you go to your artist.spotify.com account and you log into the back end, you can actually pitch your song there for Spotify curated playlists and um, it only takes like a couple of minutes and it could get your track into those Spotify playlists where you want to end up because those are working really well and it helps you to get streams. So reaching out to playlist owners is a big one but on the other hand having other DJs to support your music is one of the best ways to promote your music too because if someone else is playing your track that actually says that he likes your track and he is actually convincing his own audience to play or download or stream your track as well. So having other DJs on board really helps as well. What's up everyone checking in on Instagram right now. I hope you guys are doing well. If you have a question, feel free to drop it here and I'll try to go over it. Oh. I have done a track that have got a lot of support on Spotify. Is it a good idea to make a follow-up track? Follow-up track to that track. Same sound or... Um, it's always a great idea to do a follow-up for that track. But um, regarding the same sound, yes or no. I think if you want to build brand and if you want to uh, get people following you because they like that track. Because obvi honest, obviously that track somehow did well enough with uh, the audience they just liked it and that's the best feedback you can get you know like you created something which you thought was good but now the audience is actually confirming that it's good so what you can do now is make a track with the same sounds the same plugins still try to innovate if you want to but in the end people expect it to be kind of the same uh, as it was previously because that's how it works. You can always see it with movies as well. If you've seen Die Hard 1, Die Hard 2, Die Hard 3 and Die Hard 4 is almost the same as the first one. It's kind of copy paste. And that's because people expect it to be the same. If you go to, um, if you would have seen Die Hard 1 and then go to Die Hard 2 afterwards and it was a completely different movie, you would be disappointed because that's not what you expected, right? It's the same with music. Your follow-up track should sound some kind of similar to the track that made you successful, just to build that audience. <laughs> Do you know a nice website to upload for playlists besides Spotify for artists? Um, for playlists, that's a good one. You know, right now I'm actually working on uh, another online course with Mike Warner, who has wrote the book Work Hard, Playlist Hard. That guy knows everything about playlists on every platform. Uh, so he might be able to help you with this question and I'm sure it will be in the course as well. We're hoping to launch it in the beginning of 2020. Um, but right now I'm not really familiar with one of those websites. I do know SubmitHub, but I'm not sure 
that still is that much effective as it used to be. Uh, but yeah, right now I can't really help you. Sorry. Uh, what to do if a vocalist doesn't reply, but you already have a track finished and you want to sign it? That's uh, a tough position to be in because you need to have um, the confirmation of the artist as well to release the song. So what you could do is follow up on the email, which I guess you've probably already done. And if they don't get back to you, you might want to reply with one sentence, which is, have you given up on this project? If you send this email with just one sentence, have you given up on this project? Chances are big that they will get back to you soon. Uh, but yeah, in the end, you do need the confirmation from the artist to release your song. Make sure that you get it. What's up everyone on the Instagram live stream and on Facebook. Hope you guys are doing well. What's up Cash? It was ni nice meeting you too at the Amsterdam Dance event. Uh, for your information, these questions are getting sent in on Instagram on the live stream. Let me just check if there are some other questions. I need to ask you something, how you actually change the name on Spotify, because I, I created one and I don't know how to do it. I think the best way to do this is just contact the, uh, the customer support and see what they can do for you. They're pretty uh, quick with response, so uh, I would just advise you to do that. Xenaria, my latest track got into Spotify editorial playlist. Great to hear that. Congratulations. Uh, are you you send pictures to you? Yeah. Cool guys. Well, it has been fun again to do this. Um, it's been a long while actually. I was looking on YouTube and I think it has been a month in, since I uploaded uh, another Q&A video. Um, but it's always fun to do these things. I just have to find the time to do it. And that's now. Uh, there's not a question coming in. I'm a beginning producer and I think my music is ready for a bigger audience, but I don't know how to reach them. Well, there are separate ways to reach them. What you could do is start thinking like, where is your audience located? Where is your audience listening to the music that you make? Is that the dance floor? Is that festivals? Is that Spotify? Is that YouTube? What, which kind of markets can you uh, target to reach your audience? And it depends on what kind of music you make, but chances are pretty big that they are located on streaming platforms, probably parties as well. Um, and you can reach them through this playlist, you can reach them through influencers, you can reach them to other artists supporting music, you can reach them by uh, creating content yourself to, re to get new followers and to get new streams. There's so many ways to do this. If you really want to dive into this, um, like I mentioned at the beginning of this live stream, we've just launched a new course, an online course, through artistcoaching.nl. And this course is completely focused on this. So the main question is, I've released my song, now what? Like now, now what do I have to do? Promotion, marketing, branding. It's all focused on those questions. So if this is something that you're really struggling with, make sure to check out this, that course because it could be really, really valuable um, if that's something you're struggling with on a daily basis. What basic equipment do we need for house studios? Well, not that much actually. Like if you have a look at this, my studio, you, have, you can use these acoustic panels. Um, I've put them on top, on the sides, there's some in the back as well. Acoustic panels could be nice, um, but in the end, the most important thing is your laptop, maybe a good headphone, and I could advise this. For a home production thing as well, it's called a Sopec. This is not a product placement, by the way, it's just a product that I really love. Um, it's for in your chair and you can actually feel the bass so your neighbors won't be uh, yeah your neighbors won't be disturbed by your bass music all day long. To me it's one of the best things you can have in your home studio. 
in combination with monitor speakers or headphones, depending on what you prefer. But uh, it's not too it's not too much anymore, you know. A decent laptop which works fine. Monitor speakers, a headphone, and I would advise the sub pack as well. What's up, sniper? So guys, um, as I mentioned, always fun doing this. Thanks again for checking into the live stream. Thanks again for sending your questions. Um, feel free to check out the new website of rscoaching.nl, as I mentioned. And um, yeah, I'm getting ready to close off the year. 2019 has been a crazy year for me. Um, yeah, a lot of crazy stuff have, has happened and I'm really happy to see where the company is going and where I'm going as a person. Uh, I've developed a lot myself in the last year, which was a great journey as well. And uh, I'm really looking forward to see what 2020 is going to bring us. So I'll probably see you before Christmas. Uh, so I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.